One of the mistakes that human beings make is believing that there is only one way to live That's and right. that we don't accept that there are diverse ways of being in the world, that there are millions of ways to be a then human being and, and many ways, no, but many paths no to what you call God. That and is her path pleasing. might be something else and when she gets there she might call it the light. But her loving and her kindness and her generosity brings her, if it brings her to the same point that it brings you, it doesn't matter whether she called it God along the way or not. And I guess the danger that could be on that, I mean, it, it sounds great on the onset, but if you really look at both sides, I there couldn't person. possibly be just one way. What, what about Jesus? What about Jesus? Only one way. There is one way and only one way, and there that is through Jesus. Jesus. There couldn't possibly be with because a million you of people say in the there world. Isn't. There couldn't possibly be. Because you say, you intellectualize it and say there isn't. If no. you don't believe that, you're all buying into the lie. Today's opening prayer will be offered by a guest chaplain, Mr. Rajan Zed of the Indian Association of Northern Nevada. Lord Jesus, forgive us, Father, for allowing the prayer of the wicked, which is an abomination in your sight, to be over. The sergeant at arms will restore order in the Senate. We shall have no other gods before you. You are the one who shall the, set, the sergeant at arms will restore order in the chamber. Let me ask some questions about faith, which is a tough subject to talk about. Do we all worship the same God, Christian and Muslim? I think we do. Does. We have different routes of getting to the Almighty. Do Christians and non-Christians, do Muslims go to heaven, in your mind? Yes, they do. We have different routes of getting there. The Vatican and the Roman Catholic Church. Its Pope is currently leading the greatest ecumenical movement in history in order to unite all religions under Rome's leadership. In 1986, Pope John Paul II gathered in Assisi, Italy, the leaders of the world's major religions to pray for peace. There were snake worshipers, fire worshipers, spiritists, animists, Buddhists, Muslims, Hindus, North American witch doctors. I watched in astonishment as they walked to the microphone to pray. The Pope said they were all praying to the same God and that their prayers were creating a spiritual energy that was bringing about a new climate for peace. John Paul II allowed his good friend the Dalai Lama to put the Buddha on the altar in St. Peter's Church in Assisi and with his monks to have a Buddhist worship ceremony there while Shintoists chanted and rang their bells outside. The prophesied world religion is in the process of being formed before our eyes and the Vatican is the headquarters of the movement. Is this not spiritual fornication? In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And the earth was without form and void and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light, that it was good. Well, hi, this is Pastor Billy Crone of Niagara Frontier Bible Church, and hope you enjoyed today's sermon. But in closing, let me ask you one final question. 
If you were to die today, are you sure that you go to heaven and not hell? Well, before you answer that, let me share one final thing with you. The Bible says that God is holy and that we are not. The Bible says that all of us, including myself, have fallen short of the glory of God and that the wages of our sin is death. We don't deserve to go to heaven. We deserve to go to hell. And since we have a problem, we don't want to admit this. God, out of love, sent us something called the Ten Commandments, His law, to show us that there's no way in the world that we could ever make it to heaven on our own. Let's take a look at a couple of them. The Bible says that you shall not lie, ever, not once in your life. How many guys have ever told a lie? Raise your hand. Well, for those of you who didn't raise your hand, you just proved my point. That would make you and I a liar before God. The Bible says you shall not steal. And if we're all honest with ourselves, we've taken something, even once, in our lives without permission. That makes us a thief. The Bible says you shall not use the Lord's name in vain. And now the Lord's name has become a cuss word. We've broken that. The Bible says that makes us a blasphemer. The Bible says you shall not commit adultery. If you think you're going to get to heaven on your own, you shall never do that. But hey, you might think, well, that's a piece of cake. I've never done that one. Really? Jesus said if you look at another person with lust in your eye, you've committed adultery in your heart. One more. The Bible says you shall not murder. And you might say, hey, no problem that one. I've never done that. Really? Jesus said if you hate somebody in your heart, it's the same as murder in his eyes. Folks, that's just five out of ten commandments. How are you doing? You're going to tell me that you're going to stand before God and you really think he's going to let you into heaven and he's going to ask you, hey, who are you? And you say, hey, God, let me in. By your own admission, I'm a lying, thief, blasphemer, adulterer, murderer. Let me in. Folks, God's not going to let you in. We don't deserve to go to heaven, folks. We have broken God's law. We deserve to die and go straight to hell. Here's the good news. God doesn't want you to go to hell. So he's pardoned you for your crimes. He wants to get you off a death row. And just like in real life, a person can get off a death row if they receive the governor's pardon. But just like in real life, a governor could write the pardon, even though the person's guilty of their crimes. He could write the pardon and say, you don't have to go to the death penalty. But if they don't receive that pardon from the governor, they will still go to the death penalty. Folks, that's what God has done every day to everyone all over the world. Jesus Christ took the death penalty in our place. And every day that a person's alive, God is reaching out to them, asking them, pleading with them, please receive my pardon for your crimes. Please don't go through with the death penalty. Hey, if you're here today and you want to make sure that you're going to heaven, you need to receive God's pardon for your crimes through Jesus Christ. If that's you today, then maybe you could pray something like this. Dear Jesus, I know that I have broken your law. I am a sinner. I agree that you are holy and that I am not. And I'll never make it to heaven on my own. Please forgive me, Jesus, of all my sins. I believe that you died for me on the cross and rose again from the grave to pay the price for all my sins. I turn from my sins today and I turn to you. I trust in you, Jesus, and in you alone to take me to heaven. Make me into the person you want me to be. I surrender this life to you. In Jesus' name, Amen. Well, folks, if you really prayed that prayer and you meant it from your heart, I want to be the first one to congratulate you. Welcome to God's Forever Family. But that's just the beginning. When a person first gets saved, which is just what happened to you, the Bible likens you as a baby. And a baby needs food, they need nutrients, they need somebody to care. And that's why something important you need to do now is to find a good, healthy church in your area who can help provide that nourishment for you. Unfortunately, not all churches are very good churches, so if you have some questions, then please contact us, and we'd be glad to help you out. You need to get a Bible. You need to read the Word of God, and that's where you're going to find out about God and His wonderful plan, and the reason and what He has planned and, and saved you for. You need to find it out in there as well. You need to pray to God. He's with you now wherever you go as His child, and prayer is not something mystical or magical. It's just simply having a conversation with God 
wherever you go. And finally, you need to tell somebody else about your new relationship with God and how that they can know for sure today how they can go to heaven instead of hell through God's pardon through Jesus Christ. Well, this has been Pastor Billy Crone of Niagara Frontier Bible Church. If there's anything we can do to help you, please don't hesitate to contact us. Our information, our contact information will be coming up on the screen here shortly, and we'd love to hear from you. Remember, I hope to see you in heaven. God bless. Thank you for watching this presentation from Niagara Frontier Bible Church. If you'd like to send us a letter or any other kind of postage, you can reach us at 5287 Bronson Drive, Lewiston, New York, 14092, or you can give us a call at 716-297-8783, or for email, office at niagarafrontierbible.com, or you can visit our website at www.niagarafrontierbible.com.